Hey, let's talk about broadside phasing two beverage antennas that use CAT6 for feed lines. I'll show how I designed this combiner to feed two beverages that yield an exceptional 13.8 dB RDF receive pattern. Look, even if you don't have room for a phased array, just one of these stealthy CAT6 fed BOL antennas can be installed in a lot of situations and even in some urban locations. Heck, a single wire could be deployed temporarily and rolled up when not in use. Hey, let's get started. These antennas will perform quite well with the wire lying directly on the ground. And this is perfect for temporary installations. But over time, the antenna output and the performance will diminish as the wire sinks into the ground and becomes overgrown with vegetation. That's why my wires are slightly elevated, by stapling the wire to logs on the forest floor. They're a BOL, a beverage on a log. For 160 meters and medium wave broadcast band DXing, 300 to 500 feet is a good wire length but they'll still perform if shorter, especially on the higher bands. The wire should be terminated with a 300 ohm resistor through a short ground rod. I just pound in a three foot length of half inch water pipe. Any non-inductive resistor will do, and for permanent installations, especially if lightning is possible in your area, consider adding a gas discharge tube across the resistor to dissipate any ground surges. I'll put a link to the part numbers below this video if you're interested in them. Without a termination, the wire is bi-directional like this. When terminated, the directional pattern is in the direction of termination. I currently have 17 of these BOL wires. I run the wire out on a spool and then use a staple gun to fix them to the logs. Any insulated wire will work. At the feed point, for a passive match to the CAT6 100 ohm twisted pair, it's really easy to calculate and wind your own transformer. I describe how to do this in detail in my CAT6 video. I'll put a link to that video below this one. However, the output from a BOG wire like this can be quite low if just passively matched. So this is why I've modified the LMH66 trans impedance amplifier to match the 100 ohms. These amps really do lift the gain from these antennas. Below this video is a link to a Gerber file that you can download and then send to your favorite PCB manufacturer if you want to build one. Most of the components are through hole and easy to work with. The op amp is an SMD device, but don't be afraid of that. It's really not hard to get it on the board with a small tip soldering iron. Uh, go to my beverage amp video for more construction detail and some tips. Here's how I mount the amps in the field. Now, be mindful of the polarity of the antenna and ground terminals and the feed line, especially if you're planning to build a phased array. Now, I've labeled the PCBs with an output 1 and an output 2 terminal. On the outside of the enclosure, I usually label them with an S and a W, to correspond to the CAT6 twisted pair uh, color coding. As I said, in a phased array, it's important you don't mix these up. And if passively matching an antenna, uh, be equally careful about the polarity so you don't end up with a 180 degree phase shift. Hey, listen guys, this may sound trivial, but honestly, it's a really easy mistake that will result in a non-functioning array. So speaking of that, if you do have space, I highly recommend you consider a broadside phased pair of these wires. My experience is this really enhances the RDF and improves the SNR, the signal to noise ratio. Not just based on modeling, but from field testing and on-air experience. Here is a 4NEC2 model of a single 500 foot long wire on 160 meters, which yields a 10.6 dB RDF received directivity factor. And here is a broadside phase pair of those same wires spaced 500 feet apart, showing this excellent 13.8 dB RDF. And here are those two patterns uh, overlaid. Well, obviously, there's 3 dB more gain since we have two wires in phase, but the big improvement is in this narrow pattern and improved rear ejection. To learn more about the effect of wire spacing on RDF in a broadside pair, watch one of my prior videos where I explain that in detail. In the field, we run two equal length CAT6 cables from each beverage antenna that meet together at the combiner. The proper method for combining antennas is to use a Magic T or zero degree hybrid combiner. 
This provides good port-to-port -port isolation and impedance stability between the antennas. Look, don't be tempted to use a direct parallel connection since transferred noise can couple between the antennas and degrade performance. Here's the schematic for the combiner. The CAT6 twisted pair feed line inputs are shown. On the left, beverage 1 uh, enters the combiner through a two-pole gas discharge tube to dissipate any lightning events and then passes through a Murata 504-745 SMD common mode choke then into this relay which is normally closed. When energized, this relay will isolate beverage 1 from the combiner so I can just listen on beverage 2. I do this so I can test the relative noise levels on each wire and identify any problems. Without this relay I couldn't really know if one of the wires had a problem. From the relay the signal enters the magic T and is combined with beverage 2. Now since two 100 ohm feed lines are combined the output is now 50 ohms, so we step that back up to 100 ohms through T4 to match our CAT6 output twisted pair impedance. I've added another Murata CMC and a gas discharge tube on the output line. Obviously the signal path uh, from beverage 2 is the same as just described in beverage 1. The plus and minus 12 volt control line to isolate each beverage wire uh, input is also uh, protected with a gas discharge tube and a CMC to minimize any possible noise ingress onto the board. The PCB has all inputs clearly labeled, but as discussed earlier, be mindful of the feed line polarity. Each input is labeled as S for solid and S slash W for solid white to correspond to the CAT6 twisted pair color coding. I mount the board to the lid of the plastic enclosure and all the connections are made with number 8 stainless steel screws and I use standard number 8 crimp spade connections for the CAT6 wires. The combiner, like the feed point amps, are covered with a plastic painted camo color bucket. Below this video I will include a link to a Gerber file and a BOM that you can download if you want to build one of these combiners yourself. The great thing about using CAT6 for feed line is the availability of multiple conductors. For example, with my layout, the Oceana pair BOL combiner is over 900 feet from the shack. However, I don't need to run a separate feed line all the way to the combiner. I can use the CAT6 cable number 1. That cable can carry the 12 volts to power the amps, the plus and minus 12 volts to power the wire selection relay, a shack ground wire, the feed line from the northern BOL amplifier, and it can also carry the combiner output that goes back to the shack. Now I just need to run a CAT6 cable from here back to the shack. By the way, I always cover my CAT cable under logs in the field to prevent animals from eating them. Now in the shack, we need to transition the CAT6 100 ohm twisted pair to 50 ohms for the radio using a ferrite 2873 000202 binocular core just wind a 7 turn to 5 turn transformer. This isolation design will also minimize any common mode noise ingress. Mounted in some kind of box like this with whatever connector you want to match the coax going to your radio. For the plus and minus 12 volt beverage selection toggle I use two 12 volt wall wart power supplies. I use two of the relays on my controller board configured like this. Activate R1 for plus 12 volts, activate R2 for negative 12 volts. I can toggle these relays remotely using this Ethernet relay board driven from the PC. Receive antennas can really enhance your DX results, especially on the low bands. Sure, not everyone has space for large arrays, but perhaps you can deploy a stealthy BOG around your QTH fed with CAT6. Hey, 73, this is Steve, V6WZ.